Hello everyone, welcome to Hard Fork, where we talk about all things crypto, everything blockchain. I'm your host Shantanu. I'm live at Genesis DevCon, India's largest blockchain developer conference yet from Bangalore. On the seat alongside me is uh, somebody who I've been a big fan of for the past few years. Uh, he's known as the godfather of Ethereum and uh, he has had uh, Vitalik Brutalin as his uh, uh, buddy and partner in building blockchain protocols. Currently, he's working on a very new blockchain architecture called Eternity Protocol or Eternity Blockchain. Uh, please welcome the founder of Eternity Blockchain, Yanislav Malahov, on the show. Yanni, welcome to the show. It's awesome to have you. Fan by moment for me. Thank you for this very nice introduction, Shantanu. I'm very pleased to be here today to um, tell you more about the background of uh, Ethereum, but as well as of the future of blockchain with Eternity Blockchain. Yeah, we should love mm. uh, That's exactly the point of, you know, coming here together, talking mm. to you, understanding what Eternity is doing. So I'll probably want to start off on how has your uh, you know, journey been to India till date, till now? I mean, mm -hmm. has it been good, comfortable? I just arrived yesterday, so my ex um, experience is limited to, let's say, the airport hotel and this location here. Yeah. But I can say the food is very nice, the people are very friendly. Okay. Uh, Indians smile way more than Europeans. Okay. And, um, <laughs> It's interesting stuff going on in the conference. Mm -hmm. I saw some quite technical talks. Usually talks are not that technical, so yeah. this is very positive. And the weather, of course, is also really good at this time of the year right now. So lucky for you, you're not mm. uh, in, up north in India because, you know, the weather at the point is one, of course, it's, it does get colder there, mm. but it also gets very polluted at this mm. point in time. But good, good to see you, uh, good to have you here. Um, of course, and I would love to know, you know, you said, you know, want to talk about Eternity. I would mm -hmm. love to know, you know, the background of, you know, how you brought about Eternity mm -hmm. into the into this world. So why don't we talk about that first? Yeah, um, I mean, I guess it starts with my uh, computer science background and how I got into blockchain in general. Yeah. It's been a bunch of years ago, like I went into blockchain like professionally full time in late 2012. I decided I'm going to become a blockchain professional. Consequently, I need to essentially read up everything which was back then available online about yeah. Bitcoin, about different altcoins. This was not so much back then. It was just yeah. limited information. And I met Vitalik um, in Berlin for a Bitcoin meetup, uh, which was kind of like co-organized by the Bitcoin magazine, where he was also yes, um, uh, the co-founder of. Yeah. Uh, he wrote, he wrote uh, till that time, uh, it felt like he wrote half of the Bitcoin magazine yes. himself. Um, uh, it was, um, I mean, a uh, very smart guy, obviously. Um, so we connected very well and uh, we, uh, travel to different locations um, separately and together. For example, first was the Kalafu anarchist, uh, let's say, camp where um, we were working with also with other. Um, back then, it was let's say not blockchain the topic. It was just Bitcoin. Bitcoin was the big thing, and there were some altcoins, but uh, not really serious projects. I would right. say, mm. and. Mm, one of the projects which I started being involved with, so I gave the idea to a guy, to a businessman and entrepreneur in, um, in Europe to build a colored coin wallet to track digital artwork. Mm -hmm. And I contracted or hired Vitalik to work with me uh, together on this. Vitalik was working more on the back end of the things. We designed mm -hmm. together a, a colored coin, a custom colored coin protocol to track digital editions of artwork. So essentially tokenized I've Tokenized art. the artwork. Yes. Yeah, yeah, okay. Uh, this was in 2013, mm -hmm. very, very early on. It was a working prototype and we were frequently, frequently in touch. Um, and I published one of the chat logs. So were you doing this remotely? I mean, uh, you in Bulgaria and somewhere else? Or was yeah, it like that we, were, we were traveling both quite a lot at that time mm -hmm. already. Um, I think um, he, was, he was in Canada and Israel. Uh, we met in Austria again. We met in Italy again. Uh, we met in Amsterdam again. Mm -hmm. And we um, <clears throat> um, worked on... Um, I mean, we had these frequent uh, discussions or chats, um, and in one of one of these chats, I published uh, with the title "Godfather of Ethereum," uh, where you can read uh, about our essentially our brainstorming process. Um, 
where I suggested to have up, updatable yeah. algorithms on blockchains, on blockchain, yeah, so essentially yeah. not to hard code once the protocol, but to be more flexible. And uh, Vitalik started to write the Ethereum white paper one or two days later. So um, I stayed in touch with it, uh, with the project, with the Ethereum project, and um, I ultimately decided that I'm gonna do something different, um, mostly because it was a big hype time and lots of, let's say, non-technical people, business people were going into this project and I just wanted to build better technology, like my background is, uh, is uh, IT and computer science. And mm -hmm. I'm lots about, let's say, building things and not so much about selling things. So mm -hmm. I didn't feel very comfortable in this environment. And um, yeah, there was a huge buzz of, you know, boom of, you know, ICOs and yeah. you know, new coins coming in. Correct. I think that's what you're talking about. Right? We did a token sale for Eternity um, as well. Um, mm -hmm. I think there's nothing wrong with, let's say, tokenizing even just ideas. Yeah, like it's not. Ideas. Uh, completely not. Uh, uh, it's more, let's say, temporary. The tokenization mm -hmm. is not like a real investment when you tokenize an idea, mm -hmm. but definitely it can uh, give some insights on what is currently hot or which ideas are really actually worth to explore. If lots of people believe in ideas, then nothing can stop them to get yeah, executed at some yeah, point. Yeah. So Eternity then uh, came down somewhere around, what, 2017 uh, or 2018? We uh, started the project, uh, I mean, we registered a company um, with Ether as a base capital in Liechtenstein yeah. in late 2016 and in June, May to June, April to June, we did a token sale in two phases where we sold um, about 80% of the AE tokens um, via uh, public uh, token, token sale, sale. Yeah. and um, we received uh, over 200,000 Ether and uh, also Bitcoin um, to build the blockchain, mm -hmm. the software, as well as also fund the community development, all the ecosystem. Yeah. And uh, we are now uh, Say in a different stage, it's a very different. Um, I mean, my perception of uh, the blockchain world as well as the blockchain world itself is uh, it's uh, we're living in a different world. It's kind of like ages or generations uh, have uh, passed. Yeah, uh, yes. a, a lot of stand. things have changed over the past three years. I mean, mm -hmm. I know the, the fact that you know, I used to think that you know, I have now known enough to you know, do my work. I, you know, I see a new change coming in mm -hmm. and uh, I'm back to square one and trying to restart whatever I learned because mm -hmm. things are changing so fast. So I'm sure, so eternity happened and you know, you are now fully entrenched into this, this mm -hmm. blockchain. Uh, so while the journey has been very exciting, what do you think is, is, the, is the future? Uh, you know, mm -hmm. uh, you're looking at the future with eternity here. Yeah. Okay. So, for India specifically, uh, or generally yeah, you technology? Can, in, in general technology per se, mm -hmm. and of course India, because you are in India right now, I would mm -hmm. love to know what, what is your vision for yeah. India per se. Yeah. I mean, generally blockchain technology needs to scale, so yeah. this was also one of the main motivations why we started Charity Blockchain, because uh, neither Bitcoin nor Ethereum, um, nor at that moment, nor any other smart contract platform or just a simple blockchain was able to do more than uh, what was it about in case of uh, Bitcoin, I think 14 transactions or seven transactions in case of Ethereum is about yeah, yeah. double. Um, so obviously not enough for the world. Um, very this is uh, very early technology and scalability to improve scalability is what we mostly worked on with mm -hmm. state channels, which have launched in the future. There will be also then more complex side chains mm -hmm. and also um, kind of like shards, but we don't call them shards. Mm -hmm. um, and um, we just launched a new virtual machine, which is 10 times more space efficient than uh, similar type uh, virtual machines, meaning um, the transactions can also be smaller. Uh, so the bytecode is smaller yeah. and the blockchain is smaller, which also improves the scalability. True. And um, um, besides, um, 
the naming system has also just launched with the last hard fork, so people are right now registering names. And in the future, there will be it will be possible to send tokens or digital items to human meaningful names, names like domain such, names, yeah, yeah. like like a na like a handle that you exactly, have for Twitter as such. Yeah. Exactly. Yeah. Um, it's uh, kind of like a shame um, that we're still using phone numbers to exchange contacts, and even worse, that uh, we are using. Uh, cryptographic keys, uh, which are impossible to memorize and just lead to <laughs> yeah, mistakes. Yeah, absolutely. I mean, and it's a humongous uh, data that you have to remember. I mean, you cannot do that actually. So I think it's, you know the having a ha having a, a handle type, you know, uh, mm -hmm. data to transfer would be far more easier for people to transact, isn't it? Mm -hmm. So yeah. the usability really needs to be improved in the future with the naming system. We mm -hmm. made a step in the right direction. Uh, so I mentioned scalability, usability, governance is super important. So mm -hmm. how do the people who participate in the network make uh, decisions together about the future of the network? So we believe that people who have tokens should be able to vote in a weighted, delegated way. Mm -hmm. Not everybody is an expert, but uh, everybody knows some experts which they think might do better decisions. So they mm -hmm. can delegate mm -hmm. their voting power to this person. And additionally, there will be also prediction markets who will predict then the outcome of the votes and uh, the outcome of hard forks. And this way, um, there will be, I believe, a kind of like a equilibrium or there will be, it will be very synergetic to have voting, betting, as well as mining to create uh, consensus. I mean, strictly speaking, technically speaking, it's not consensus like mm -hmm. Bitcoin, but it's rather like a agreement. On the users. It's like a community driven or maybe like something like, you know, um, wisdom of the crowd kind yeah. of a agreement. You know? Exactly. So if there are 20 people agreeing to something, it becomes so kind exactly. of stuff. Isn't it that way? Exactly. And yeah. when I'm speaking about these things, I'm speaking on very, let's say, abstract technical level. But mm. if you want to apply this in India, for example, a governance system uh, based on uh, direct democracy, mm -hmm. uh, so means uh, one knows, one votes, mm -hmm. um, this would be also perfect for blockchain technology, specifically mm -hmm. also for Eternity blockchain. Um, we actually have a partner in Uruguay, a political party, the digital political party in Uruguay, uh, tried out um, this governance app to vote for their internal votes inside the party. Mm -hmm. um, so there's interest um, to essentially upgrade um, the social fabric, um, yeah. how essentially the society uh, organizes itself, not just how it exchanges value, but also how it makes decisions together. And for a democracy like India, I think this, if applied yeah, yeah. correctly, this might really lead to a boom for yeah, absolutely, the economy absolutely. and yeah, yeah, yeah. Uh, to a new stability and eliminate corruption or uh, reduce corruption. Reduce corruption, uh, eliminate is <laughs> it's probably, it's, 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 you, probably utopian, but yeah, we would love to have. I think, you know, um, we, I was having a discussion a, a couple of months back about you know why isn't the government looking at voting? We just had an election mm. in the month of May, and uh, there was a campaign run by one of the newspapers which said that there are so many votes uh, that are lost because uh, the the policy is that that person who is uh, who has to vote has to be in the constituency that he is registered as a voter, mm -hmm. which means if I am I have moved out from the constituency, I will not be able to vote yeah. because I have to go back and. So a lot of votes are lost. I said, yeah. why can't we move the voting to the blockchain? So that's where probably your thoughts are coming from, right? Uh, Absolutely, yeah. this yeah. is one thing. But also, um, generally speaking, I find it a joke when we make like two crosses on a piece of paper every four years and call it democracy. Uh, this is not any more up-to-date system. We need to upgrade our systems, how we work together. Yes. And there's no no doubt about this. There are countries who are really going this direction um, with direct democracy. Uh, for example, Switzerland has implemented such a system for a long time. It works very well, mm -hmm. uh, direct democracy on communal uh, cantonal and government, uh, country level. Mm -hmm. But another example where democracy doesn't work is America. Um, it has happened now twice that actually the uh, 
the, the candidate with the lower amount of votes became the president, the president because yes. it's not the popular vote, like most votes which count by the people, which a democracy is, it's rather like a complicated hierarchy of Absolutely, of, of, the, uh, yeah, of the voting per se. Mm. I, think, I think it's also, you know, the fact that, you know, India as, uh, is, is the largest democracy in the world with, uh, you know, it's a huge, huge democracy. Mm. And the discussion that we were having primarily was, why can't we start with a small segment or a small sector wherein we can start voting, say for example, mm. uh, a municipality somewhere, mm. and we do voting on the on blockchain, mm. and uh, that could be a, a proof or concept for the entire nation one by one. If okay. some mayor is watching the show here, yes. we would love to collaborate to implement a voting system for the people. Good, yeah, of course. You know, if the, if somebody is watching this, we would love to collaborate uh, with the. They, they have already created something like that and I think I think it makes a lot of good business sense too uh, for the government itself because you know the amount of infrastructure that goes into creating the voting apparatus yeah. in a country like India is huge mm -hmm. and uh, there are vote there are elections happening every now and then so I think it's a very use, good mm -hmm. use case probably we can take some leaf from that Uruguayan example or Switzerland example and probably try to see if we can produce a paper and hand it over to the government some way or the mm -hmm. other. We can do that too, for sure, yeah. Mm -hmm. Yani, there are uh, many other blockchains and protocols which, uh, which talk about uh, a smart contract related, you know, architecture. Mm -hmm. So what does uh, Eternity, uh, how is Eternity different when mm -hmm. it comes to smart contracts? Mm -hmm. So uh, we, we build Eternity from scratch yeah. mm, and we try to make every single module of what such a rather complex blockchain peer-to-peer -peer smart contract platform is built of, like to improve it. Mm -hmm. The programming language, the smart contract language is of course uh, one of the most important things for mm -hmm. a smart contract platform. Naturally, with Ethereum, for example, um, Solidity got created by enthusiasts, but not by, let's say, experienced uh, language creators. Oh, okay. So it's a uh, I mean, everybody who is good in language theory or has lots of programming experience mm -hmm. uh, will confirm this, that Solidity is not a good language. Okay. It's kind of like uh, JavaScript uh, one, also not so nice language. But okay. it has, of course, the potential to improve. Still, JavaScript is the language of the web. Maybe Solidity will make it, but yeah, yeah. we thought it would make much more sense to uh, use a different programming algorithm, a functional programming algorithm to make it possible to use also formal proofs mm -hmm. to verify things. So Tezos, for example, is also doing this. Yeah. For them, this is the main big thing. Um, for us, it's very important, but it's um, one of the innovations which we bring to the table. Four people who have uh, co-created or solely created programming languages in the past mm -hmm. have been involved in the creation of our new smart contract language called Sophia. Okay. It's a uh, functional language, uh, ML dialect, and the virtual machine which executes it, it's, uh, it's also way more especially space efficient than okay. similar type of virtual machines and provides more safety. Um, so um, generally it's structuring on a higher level mm -hmm. than um, typical, um, let's say low, low level bytecode oriented okay. uh, virtual okay. machines. Um, what else do we do differently? So we have integrated also a bunch of features into um, let's say the level one or level zero, mm -hmm. such as uh, names are part of the protocol. We believe that there should be like one unique canonical naming system uh, for Eternity blockchain. Currently, the auction is going on where people can register their names for Eternity tokens. The shorter the name, the more expensive the name, the longer, uh, the, oh, okay. the shorter also the, the auction is and the cheaper the name is. So we think this is kind of like uh, making it a bit more fair. Um, mm -hmm. um, everybody likes to have shorter names or to yeah, type yeah. less than more. <laughs> And um, besides, we have also integrated state channels. Yeah. State channels are, um, some people call them, or it has some similarities to side chains. They're kind of okay. the most simple side chains. So essentially just two people open up a state channels or two accounts open up a state channel mm -hmm. through doing one on-chain transaction. 
uh, locking in some eternity tokens into okay. this account and then uh, there can be also smart contract locked in mm -hmm. additionally to this the smart contract stays private and also all these transactions in the state channel stay private um, every time there's a state transition so something changes somebody receives value or the smart contracts needs to be executed because of an oracle result then um, the uh, both I mean both parties sign the new updated state mm -hmm. and if for whatever reason one of the counterparties disappears what usually happens when, for example, we have no more internet or no more electricity or some other disaster or when somebody just wants to run away from the smart contract so mm -hmm. essentially doesn't want to pay his bill, then the party which feels cheated takes this smart contract um, plus the last signed state mm. from both parties, publish it to the blockchain and then it gets enforced. So it has essentially um, the same um, um, or very similar um, security uh, guarantees like having everything from the beginning on the blockchain just mm -hmm. that again you can have the smart contract privately as well as the transactions are essentially instant, in instant yeah. and free inside the state channels okay. only in case you need to write to the blockchain because of disagreement yeah. or because you just want to close the blockchain uh, the state channel, channel yeah. then uh, you need to do an on-chain transaction. Okay. And in case you need to enforce because of disagreement, then you also need to publish the smart contract and mm -hmm. the last state. Otherwise, it's fine just to essentially uh, close the channel with uh, the final balances of the participants. Mm -hmm. yeah. uh, we are working also on um, doing a, a network or a virtual state channels, so essentially to hop over one or several parties, uh, but uh, not even um, like uh, like have the feeling or have a from a programming perspective it looks like uh, it's just one open state channel so you mm -hmm. don't even notice it's okay. virtualized okay um this is has some similarities to the lightning network with for bitcoin just okay. that it's also working with smart contracts so mm -hmm. more complex logic so my mind blown <laughs> yeah there's uh, a few innovations which we have yeah, yeah. Uh, there's more um yeah <laughs> okay so please please continue I and mean, the viewers are listening for example, um, Bitcoin NG uh, is uh, was uh, or is, is still a white paper which got published by this, uh, Satoshi Nakamoto. Actually, not Satoshi Nakamoto, but okay. uh, some uh, university professors uh, from very reputable universities from the U.S. and Israel, and uh, they essentially proposed a next generation uh, consensus algorithm for Bitcoin, still with mining, just that. Um, like keeping the block uh, 10 uh, minute block time but mm -hmm. in between uh, the the miner like the the last person who mined a block and becomes a leader and can publish uh, for example three seconds so-called micro blocks okay so this way the network reaches a sooner consensus uh, the confirmations can also come sooner and it's um, it's definitely um, a big benefit for scaling because mm -hmm. if you have a longer block time then the network kind of doesn't really know is the transaction already inside, is it not inside. Um, um, so we believe this is a big improvement as well um, to have essentially key blocks and mm -hmm. in between these key blocks there are micro blocks. Micro blocks so that you know the, the, the consensus is faster. Which are which are kind of like kind of like proof of stake. So there's a right now there's just like one leader but in the future it will be like a set of mm -hmm. leaders which will then uh, create uh, very fast transactions and uh, tell the network mm -hmm. uh, what's what's inside uh, okay. the, the so, state. So, so is, this, is this what you were talking about when you talk about the hybrid proof of work and proof of stake so is this, is, is this the hybrid is? proof of work and proof of stake so the proof of work is this Bitcoin NG yeah. um, yes uh, this is one piece of it yeah. where like a set of leaders will be selected okay. um, additionally um, I also think think that prediction markets yeah. are also a way of proof of stake. People can put down their money, they can win for making good predictions about the future, about hard forks, essentially mm -hmm. about governance decisions of the blockchain, okay. but also they can lose if they make bad decisions. So mm -hmm. it's, it's several things which work nicely together, um, we think. So um, proof of work with 
people voting without that they risk their tokens, as Absolutely. well as people who are more entrepreneurial, who really want to get into their with their stake and possibly uh, make uh, a winning or uh, yeah, a better losing. predictions and, and yeah. winning predictions. But this, this essentially um, creates uh, some sort of uh, collective intelligence or yeah. hive minds. Um, yeah. I think uh, we need to visualize these things better. Uh, blockchain transactions are very, uh, let's say, uh, I mean, uh, we need to, uh, I mean, this data needs to be somehow processed and prepared so yeah. that it's uh, more valuable also for yeah. uh, humans to look at and see, oh, this is the, this is what the network is thinking. Uh, yeah, yeah, yeah. And so, yeah, I was, I was, I was, I was, I was talking to Satya, Dr. Satya Lokam uh, a little while back. He's a senior researcher with Microsoft Labs and we were discussing something called crowd sensing, mm -hmm. wherein the, there are IoT devices uh, with individual people and we can collect data from individual IoT devices or maybe a smartphone for that matter. Mm -hmm. And we can use that data mm -hmm. just like a wisdom of the crowd and we can create better predictions or, or mm -hmm. better models for, say for example, the pollution mm -hmm. or uh, you know the temperature differences that we find in, in various places. So yeah. we can make better predictions and meteorological data and all that stuff. It so, would yeah. be great if uh, the meteorological institutes which essentially participate in or uh, bet against each other who does the best uh, <laughs> predictions. Uh, oh, man. Uh, I'm not sure about India, but I'm sure that somewhere outside you'll find somebody, some taker for this kind of mm -hmm. stuff. Because in India, you know, there are uh, we, um, I mean, uh, you know, the if I want to have my own, uh, you know, satellite, mm -hmm. you know, which is sending data for meteorology data, I can't, I can't use it. Mm -hmm. uh, I can, I can fly India. But this is the the beauty about uh, mm -hmm. decentralized blockchain technology yeah. that uh, everybody can use it from home in a let's say yeah. very private environment. You don't need to install anything mm -hmm. uh, outside, and you can transact or you can participate in such prediction markets. Yeah. And it does not need to be the Meteorological Institute itself, which essentially puts the data. The data yeah, it could it be, be a third party. It needs to be somewhat. Uh, somewhat uh, trusted in the sense, I mean, uh, it can corrupt if it's a single source. I recommend mm -hmm. to use several sources of data, like oracles, on-chain yeah. oracles, to uh, uh, combine them with, with smart contracts. And this way, for example, uh, anybody who has, of course, development skills could create a marketplace for such type of bets about the weather, about the price of some shares, mm -hmm. about football games or cricket games or essentially any uh, anything which can be um, any um, event which can be uh, essentially uh, put down in discrete values like uh, whereas like uh, one and zero or like several values. Uh, can be um, can be kind of like tokenized and can be a market created around this. Absolutely, yeah, of course, yeah. Mm -hmm. I mean, I'm, I'm talking about uh, even even if it's not a betting market, I'm talking I'm talking thinking about maybe in the agricultural uh, you know predictions for weather because you know exactly. we are very highly dependent on the weather for making yeah. having good produce, yeah. all right? So you there know there be, are there can be insurance, so yeah. decentralized insurance, which is very similar to essentially yeah, betting on, on football game results. It's just meteorological um, data which then gets collected and the farmers, they can insure themselves against, for example, a drought where it doesn't rain all summer. Yeah, absolutely, yes. And they can do this from anywhere where is essentially a simple internet connection it does not need to be fast. Yeah, uh, absolutely, yeah, of course, yeah. I think it's, there, are, there are a lot of uses of this kind of uh, technology, yeah, thank you. I think we'll mm -hmm. have to probably Keep on discussing this. Just keep on going on this discussion, uh, Yanni. Um, so while you've been, you know, I'm sure you've been doing a lot of traveling in, all across the world. You said about building the community around eternity, mm -hmm. and uh, so so one of course is I want to understand that you know the outlook towards community development in India, mm -hmm. and not only that, but the talent development for being able to have more and more developers who mm -hmm. are coming on board the eternity blockchain and creating, you know. Uh, in dApps or on, on eternity. So, uh, what is your vision towards both community of eternity in India and uh, the development of developer community or development on eternity from India? Mm -hmm. Yeah, um, so we funded uh, several uh, projects uh, which are going into the uh, educational direction as well as into the, I mean, not just developer education but also entrepreneur education okay. direction. Um, Decade is uh, one uh, of the projects. It's uh, 
online platform uh, mm -hmm. where you essentially earn eternity tokens uh, for passing tutorials to write smart contracts. Oh, okay. uh, it's quite popular in Africa. Um, and um, I mean, we, we are quite uh, happy with the results. Uh, mm -hmm. It's very interesting to essentially to create a, to a tokenized, incentivized uh, online learning platform. Mm -hmm. I have not been involved in the creation. This is uh, Moritz, uh, a guy from uh, Berlin, okay. who does this platform. Um, so, so, how, so, sorry, interrupt. How, how can the, uh, uh, the, the developers from India plug into these kind of things? I mean, they can, how can they do that? It's just uh, very simple, like go to Decades or Google Decades, I'm not sure mm. which is the domain name ending, uh, or Decade Eternity, and you will find uh, the website and you can register and you can pass through the tutorials okay, and you can earn okay. tokens. Cool. D-A-C-A-C, uh, oh, D-A-C-A-D-E, that's it. Decade, decade. Yeah. okay, Decade, Decade. So guys, Decade is one which you can get on and uh, get on tutorials of eternity and uh, earn and spend learn. tokens yeah yeah and learn <laughs> about smart contracts learn and smart contracts, development yeah. and earn e-tokens yeah uh, one more serious approach to uh, the um, community development as yeah. well as uh, education as well as like mentoring and uh, also financial support for developers entrepreneurs and startups is uh, Eternity Ventures with its Starfleet program. Yes. Uh, the Starfleet program um, started first one is, was in, in Sofia. Mm -hmm. um, now there was one in Malta. Okay. And there will be one in India mm -hmm. also very soon. The applications currently are open. Okay. So if you look up uh, Eternity Ventures Starfleet, you can apply to become uh, accelerated uh, with your startup, um, I think you don't even necessarily need to have an idea, um, mm -hmm. but of course you need to have motivation, Some why motivation, yeah. <laughs> you need or want to be involved. Yeah, yeah absolutely. And yes. um, yeah, the next program will be here in India and uh, I'm very excited to see what will be coming out of this. Uh, we had, uh, I mean, through this program about I'm not even sure how many companies pass through this, but I think the portfolio startups are about 10 at the moment, mm -hmm. and um, hundreds of applications have been processed, mm -hmm. and it's uh, quite successful in the sense that all the startups are still alive and working mm -hmm. on the projects, mm -hmm. and uh, one has now, uh, like the first one which actually deployed tokens to eternity mm -hmm. um, was tokenizing again artwork. It seems to be a thing here, like yeah, tokenized yeah. artwork. Um, uh, you're artwork. talking about graffiti, is it? Mm. Actually, it's related to this, mm -hmm. but it's not uh, this. Uh, oh, I'm talking about Yer. Yeah, tokenizing yeah, the, okay. is, uh, Your art is reality. It's okay, okay. a Berlin uh, project as well. And they, they work with uh, top notch artists from the world. Um, so Tokenizing the art, right? Oh, yeah. okay. Ex exactly. Yeah, yeah. Then the second project, which uh, has now launched with its first client, is AmpNet, which is an energy trading platform. And um, um, at some point, some time in the future, they will also launch this with with Greenpeace. So they have big partners involved. Mm -hmm. I have also received a follow-up investments and. Um, it's a really good opportunity for uh, Indian developers, entrepreneurs mm -hmm. to essentially get involved in the Starfleet program, to learn about Eternity, get mentored also in terms of business, like there's much more to know about Absolutely, than just writing yeah. smart contracts, like uh, to create a legal entity, to maybe even tokenize this legal entity from the beginning. There are different jurisdictions for this. For example, Liechtenstein is a very uh, nice one. Mm. Um, and uh, also like how to pitch, how to present, uh, how to build a minimal wire product. And yeah. uh, we also have, of course, a big network and we are happy to, um, I mean, when we take you into our program or when the Starfleet program takes you, then uh, there will be assistance on uh, different levels, as well as, of course, uh, financial assistance to awesome. build um, yeah. and scale. Awesome, yeah. So I think, you know, the, the entire community should take a leap from this discussion here that Starfleet program from Eternity is uh, from Eternity Ventures is coming to India, and uh, the developer community can take advantage of this, learn how to you know make smart contracts on the Eternity platform, and uh, also get funded if their idea is damn good, right? Mm -hmm. 
okay cool mm-hmm. um yani i think uh, you know i had a lot of questions but you know we are short on time when it comes mm-hmm. to episode building on 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 videos and on television so uh, i would like to thank you so much from my bottom of my heart to you know uh, come and sit with me on on hard fork it's a amazing pleasure for me to have you with the on the show thank you of so course. much thank it's you it's a pleasure absolutely okay. thank you mm-hmm. so guys that was uh, the godfather of ethereum and uh, the founder of eternity uh, blockchain uh, yanislav malahov uh, for you at uh, hard fork at genesis devcon live from bangalore we'll see you shortly thank you bye bye